A few years ago, I had a strange and eerie experience that I still can't fully explain. It happened one night while I was fishing off a pier by the sea. I often went there to relax after a long day, enjoying the cool breeze and the soothing sound of the waves crashing against the shore. The pier was a bit isolated, which I liked because it meant fewer people and more peace. On this particular night, the sky was clear and the stars were bright. The moon cast a gentle glow on the water, making it shimmer. I set up my fishing gear and cast my line into the dark water, hoping to catch something decent. As I waited, I looked around and noticed another fisherman at the far end of the pier. He stood very still, almost like a statue, with his back to me. He wore a long, dark coat and a wide-brimmed hat, which struck me as odd because it wasn't cold enough for such heavy clothing. I waved and called out to him, thinking it would be nice to have some company, but he didn't respond. He just stood there, unmoving, his focus seemingly fixed on the water. I shrugged it off, figuring he was just deeply engrossed in his own fishing. I went back to my own line, watching it intently for any signs of a bite. A little while later, I heard a splash and looked up again. The man was gone. There were no ripples in the water, no sounds, just an empty spot where he had been standing. A chill ran down my spine. I walked to the end of the pier where he had been, peering into the water below. It was calm and dark, no sign of anyone having fallen in or jumped. I called out again, louder this time, but there was no answer. The only sound was the gentle lapping of the waves against the pier's supports. I started to feel uneasy. Where could he have gone? The pier was long, and I should have seen him walking past me if he had left. Yet, there was no sign of him anywhere. I checked my watch and realized it was getting late. The earlier sense of peace I had felt was now replaced with a growing sense of dread. I decided it was time to pack up and go home. As I gathered my gear, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I kept glancing over my shoulder, half expecting to see the man reappear out of nowhere. The silence around me was thick and oppressive, unlike the usual peaceful quiet of a calm night. Just as I was about to leave, I heard it, a low, faint whisper. It was so soft I almost missed it. I froze, straining to hear it again. There it was, a little louder this time, like someone murmuring just out of earshot. My heart raced, and I looked around, but I couldn't see anyone. The whispering continued, an unintelligible murmur that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. I quickly finished packing my things and hurried down the pier, my footsteps echoing loudly in the still night. As I reached the shore, I glanced back one last time. The end of the pier was empty the mysterious fisherman nowhere to be seen. The whispering had stopped, replaced by the familiar sound of the waves. I got into my car and drove home, my mind racing with questions. Who was that man? Where did he go? And what was that whispering? The whole experience was unsettling, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I talked to some friends and other fishermen about it, but no one had ever seen or heard anything like what I described. For weeks, I had trouble sleeping, haunted by the image of that still figure and the eerie whispers. I avoided the pier for a long time, choosing instead to fish at other, more populated spots. Eventually, curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to return, hoping to make sense of what had happened. When I finally went back, it was a sunny afternoon, far from the eerie atmosphere of that night. I walked to the end of the pier and stood where the man had been. Everything seemed normal, but the memory of that night lingered. I never saw the mysterious fisherman again, but I couldn't shake the feeling that he was somehow connected to the pier, a phantom of the past or a lost soul bound to that spot. To this day, I still fish at that pier occasionally, always during the day, never at night. And every time I do, I can't help but glance at the end of the pier half expecting to see the silent figure standing there, watching the water. The memory of that night serves as a constant reminder of how little we truly know about the world around us and the mysteries that lie just beneath the surface. 
I love fishing in remote places, where it feels like you're the only person in the world. One of my favorite spots is a deep swamp in the Florida Everglades. It's not easy to get to, but that's part of the charm. The swamp is full of life, and the fishing is always good. I've spent many afternoons there, casting my line and enjoying the peace and quiet. One day, I decided to go deeper into the swamp than I ever had before. I wanted to find a spot where no one else had fished. I packed my gear, loaded my small boat, and set off early in the morning. The sun was just rising, and the mist hung low over the water, giving everything an eerie, magical feel. I paddled for hours, navigating through narrow channels and dense vegetation. The further I went, the quieter it became. The usual sounds of birds and insects started to fade, replaced by an almost complete silence. It was a bit unsettling, but I told myself it was just because I was so far from civilization. Finally, I found a spot that looked perfect. The water was clear, and there were plenty of overhanging trees where fish might be hiding. I anchored my boat and started fishing. For a while, everything was peaceful. I caught a few small fish and enjoyed the solitude. The sun was high in the sky, and the swamp was bathed in a warm, golden light. As the afternoon wore on, the light began to fade, and the swamp started to feel different. The air grew cooler, and the shadows lengthened. I decided to make one last cast before heading back. Just as I was about to reel in, I heard a noise that made my blood run cold. It was a scream, loud and full of pain and terror. It echoed through the trees, sending a chill down my spine. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I couldn't tell where it was coming from, but it sounded close. Too close. I tried to convince myself it was just an animal. Maybe a panther or an alligator. But it didn't sound like any animal I'd ever heard. It sounded human. I strained my ears, listening for any other sounds. The swamp was eerily silent again, as if it were holding its breath. Then I heard the scream again, even louder this time. It was definitely a human scream. Fear gripped me, and I felt a sudden urge to get out of there. I started packing up my gear as quickly as I could, my hands shaking. The scream echoed through the trees once more, sending a wave of panic through me. I jumped into my boat and started paddling away, not caring where I was going as long as it was away from that sound. The swamp seemed to close in around me, the dense vegetation making it hard to navigate. I kept paddling, my eyes darting around, expecting to see something horrible at any moment. As I rounded a bend in the channel, I saw something that made my heart stop. Standing in the shallow water was a figure, tall and dark, with glowing eyes that seemed to pierce through the gloom. It didn't move, just stood there watching me. I couldn't make out any details, but the sight of it filled me with a deep, primal fear. I paddled faster, my mind racing. What was that thing? And what had made that scream? I didn't want to find out. I just wanted to get back to safety. The sun was setting, and the swamp was growing darker by the minute. The air was thick with tension, and every sound made me jump. Finally, after what felt like hours, I reached a wider channel that I recognized. I paddled with all my strength, my arms aching. The figure and the scream seemed far behind me now, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The swamp, once a place of peace and beauty, had turned into a nightmare. When I finally reached the edge of the swamp and saw the familiar sight of my car, I almost cried with relief. I dragged my boat onto the shore, my legs trembling. I didn't waste any time packing up my gear. I just threw everything into the car and got in, locking the doors behind me. As I drove away, I couldn't stop thinking about what I had seen and heard. The swamp was a place of mystery, and I knew it held secrets that were better left undiscovered. I vowed never to go that deep into the swamp again. The memory of those screams and that dark figure haunted me for weeks. Even now, I can't forget that day. The swamp still calls to me, but I ignore it. Some places are meant to stay wild and untamed, full of their own dark mysteries. 
and some things are better left unexplored. It was a sunny afternoon when my friends and I decided to go fishing at a remote lake we'd heard about. We were excited to explore a new spot and maybe catch some big fish. The lake was surrounded by dense woods, far from any town or main road. It was the perfect place to get away from everything. When we arrived, we saw an old, abandoned fishing boat on the shore. It was covered in moss and dirt, and it looked like it hadn't been touched in years. The boat was big enough for all of us, and we thought it would be fun to use it. We loaded our gear into the boat, pushed it into the water, and climbed in. At first, everything seemed normal. We paddled out to the middle of the lake, enjoying the peace and quiet. The water was calm, and the sun was warm on our faces. We started fishing, chatting and laughing, happy to be out on the water. But as the day went on, strange things began to happen. Our fishing equipment started to malfunction. Lines would tangle for no reason, hooks would disappear, and the fish seemed to avoid us. We thought it was just bad luck, but then we began hearing whispering voices. They were soft at first, barely audible, but they grew louder and more insistent. It sounded like people talking just out of earshot, but we couldn't make out what they were saying. A sense of unease settled over us. The air felt heavy, and the temperature seemed to drop. One of my friends, Tom, said he felt like we were being watched. I tried to brush it off, saying it was just our imaginations, but I felt it too. The whispering grew louder, and it seemed to be coming from all around us. Suddenly, one of my friends, Lisa, screamed and pointed at the water. We all looked and saw a face staring up at us from beneath the surface. It was pale and ghostly, with hollow eyes and a twisted expression. The face disappeared as quickly as it had appeared, but it left us all shaken. We were terrified, our hearts pounding in our chests. We decided to leave immediately. We paddled back to shore as fast as we could, but the boat seemed to move slower and slower. The whispering voices were louder now, almost deafening. It felt like the lake itself was trying to keep us there. When we finally reached the shore, we jumped out of the boat and scrambled onto the land, our legs trembling. We didn't bother to unload our gear. We just wanted to get away from that cursed boat. As we were leaving, I looked back at the lake. The boat was still there, drifting slowly, as if it was watching us leave. The whispering had stopped, but the sense of dread lingered. We drove home in silence, each of us lost in our thoughts. None of us could explain what had happened, and we didn't want to talk about it. The lake, which had seemed so inviting at first, had become a place of nightmares. I couldn't shake the feeling that we had disturbed something that should have been left alone. Over the next few days, we tried to go back to our normal lives, but the memory of that day haunted us. We had nightmares about the face in the water and the whispering voices. We never went back to that lake, and we avoided talking about it. It was as if mentioning it would bring the curse back into our lives. Years have passed, but the memory of that abandoned boat still chills me. I've never felt such fear and unease in my life. The lake remains a mystery, and I have no desire to solve it. Some things are better left unexplored, and that cursed boat is one of them. I was excited to go fly fishing in the remote mountains. This place was special, far from the hustle and bustle of city life. I loved the peacefulness and beauty of the mountain stream. I had my gear ready and was looking forward to a day of fishing. I started early in the morning, eager to make the most of the day. The sky was clear, and the air was crisp. The sound of the stream was soothing as I made my way along the bank, looking for the perfect spot to cast my line. The water was clear and cool, and I could see fish darting about. It was perfect. Hours passed quickly. I caught a few fish and released them back into the stream. The sun was beginning to set, and the light turned a warm, golden color. I decided it was time to head back to my car. The trail wasn't far, and I knew it well, or so I thought. As I started walking back, a thick fog rolled in. 
It came in so fast, it was like someone had flipped a switch. The fog was dense, making it hard to see more than a few feet in front of me. I felt a chill run down my spine, but I tried to stay calm. I'd been in fog before, and I just needed to be careful and take my time. But something was different this time. The trail I knew so well seemed to vanish. I walked for what felt like hours, but I couldn't find any familiar landmarks. The fog made everything look strange and eerie. My heart began to race as I realized I was lost. I tried to follow the sound of the stream, thinking it would lead me back to where I started. But every time I thought I was close, the sound would disappear, and I would find myself deeper in the fog. My footsteps seemed to echo, and I felt like I was walking in circles. Panic started to set in. I stopped to catch my breath and think. I needed to stay calm and focused. I remembered that I had a small flashlight in my pack. I took it out and turned it on, hoping the light would help me find my way. The beam cut through the fog, but it didn't reveal anything familiar. I kept walking, my legs growing tired and my mind racing with fear. The fog was disorienting, and I had no sense of direction. I shouted for help, but my voice seemed to be swallowed by the mist. There was no response, only silence. The sun had set completely now, and the darkness made everything worse. I stumbled upon a clearing and decided to stay there for the night. It was safer than wandering around in the dark and fog. I sat down, my back against a tree, and wrapped myself in my jacket. The cold night air was biting, and I tried to stay warm. Sleep was impossible. Every rustle of leaves and snap of a twig made me jump. The silence was heavy, and the fog seemed to press in around me. I felt utterly alone and terrified. The night dragged on, and I kept hoping the fog would lift with the morning light. Finally, as dawn broke, the fog began to thin. I could see more of my surroundings, and the clearing didn't look familiar at all. I felt a surge of hope and started walking again, determined to find my way back. After a few hours, I stumbled upon a trail. Relief washed over me as I followed it, and soon I recognized where I was. I eventually made it back to my car, exhausted and shaken. I sat there for a long time, just trying to process what had happened. The experience had been terrifying, and it made me realize how quickly things can go wrong in the wilderness. I loved the mountains and the peace they brought, but I learned to respect their dangers that day. Now I always carry extra supplies and a GPS when I go fishing. I tell someone where I'm going and when I expect to be back. That day in the fog taught me a valuable lesson about the power of nature and the importance of being prepared. It's a memory that will stay with me forever. I've always loved fishing at this secluded lake. It's hidden deep in the forest, a place where you can really get away from everything. I've been coming here for years, and it always felt like my special spot. The water is clear, the fish are plentiful, and the solitude is perfect. I've had many peaceful evenings here, just sitting quietly and casting my line. One evening, I decided to stay out later than usual. It was a warm summer night, and I thought the conditions were perfect for catching a big one. The sun was setting, painting the sky with shades of orange and pink. As the light faded, I settled into my boat, enjoying the quiet. Usually, I could hear the sounds of nature all around me, birds singing, insects buzzing, and the gentle rustle of leaves in the wind. But tonight something felt different. As the last rays of sunlight disappeared, an eerie silence fell over the lake. It was as if the whole world had gone mute. I couldn't even hear the usual splashing of fish or the croaking of frogs. It was unnaturally quiet, and it made me uneasy. I tried to shake off the feeling, telling myself it was just my imagination. I focused on my fishing, casting my line into the still water. I sat there for a while, lost in my thoughts, when I suddenly felt a strong tug on my line. My heart leapt with excitement. This was it, the big catch I had been hoping for. I started reeling in, 
feeling the weight and resistance of something substantial. My adrenaline was pumping as I imagined the size of the fish on the other end. But as I brought it closer, something didn't feel right. The fish wasn't fighting like usual. There were no frantic jerks or sudden pulls. Instead, it felt like I was dragging something heavy and lifeless. A cold shiver ran down my spine as I continued to reel it in. When it finally broke the surface, I leaned over the side of the boat to get a better look. What I saw made my blood run cold. It wasn't a fish at all. It was a dark, rotting human hand, still gripping a piece of fishing line. I stared in horror, unable to move or think. The hand was pale and bloated, the fingers curled around the line as if it had been reaching for help. The sight was so shocking, so surreal, that I couldn't process it at first. Then, panic set in. I dropped my rod, the reel spinning out of control as the hand disappeared back into the depths. My hands were shaking, and I could barely breathe. I grabbed the oars and started paddling back to shore with all my strength. Every muscle in my body was screaming, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get out of there as fast as I could. As I paddled, I kept looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see something, or someone, emerging from the water. The silence was oppressive, the only sound being the frantic splash of the oars cutting through the lake. My mind was racing with questions. Whose hand was that? How did it end up here? And what else might be lurking beneath the surface? When I finally reached the shore, I stumbled out of the boat and collapsed onto the ground, gasping for breath. My heart was pounding, and my head was spinning. I looked back at the lake, now calm and serene, as if nothing had happened. It seemed impossible that such a peaceful place could hide something so horrifying. I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to report it to the authorities, but I was terrified of going back out there, even with help. What if they didn't find anything? Would they think I was crazy? And what if they did find something? The thought of uncovering more horrors made my skin crawl. In the end, I decided to leave and never come back. I packed up my gear and headed home, my mind still reeling from what I had seen. I tried to put it behind me, but the image of that rotting hand haunted me. I had nightmares about it for weeks, waking up in a cold sweat, the sensation of that lifeless grip still fresh in my mind. To this day, I can't shake the feeling that something, or someone, is still out there, waiting beneath the surface of that silent lake. I've never told anyone about what I saw, fearing they wouldn't believe me or, worse, that they would. The lake, once my sanctuary, has become a place of dread and mystery. And no matter how hard I try, I can't forget the horror of that night.